Hello, everyone, and welcome to Avalon Introduction and Tactical Webinar. Um, it was there was time when I was doing these two webinars separately, but um, now we're going to be combining them. So uh, my name is Avtanul Giorgaza, and I'm a Sales and Solutions Engineer here at Fortress Power. Um, but you can call me Gio, since my name is not the easiest one either to pronounce or to spell. <laughs> so Gio is fine. Uh, the observant ones of you will notice that those are the first three letters of my last name. So, a few words about Fortress Power. Uh, we were founded seven years ago uh, here in Pennsylvania, and we are still headquartered in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, although we have um, other offices in Asia, namely China, Puerto Rico, we have California office, um, and yeah, uh, in California and uh, Actually, in Puerto Rico and China, we also have labs. So when we're doing testing here, they're doing parallel testing there to deliver the uh, ready products to you uh, on promised dates. We are backed up by private equity partners, and we have uh, tens of thousands of units installed um, in the field. I think we are near 30,000, if I'm not mistaken, but nonetheless. Um, and we offer battery bank sizes ranging from 5.4 kilowatt hours, that's our smallest residential battery, EFLEX, to 4.5 megawatt hours, which is a combination of our commercial batteries named Espire. So all of this shows you uh, that we know what we're doing and uh, we're constantly improving and trying to deliver better and better product, uh, products and uh, yeah, not to lag behind the times and changes. So. Before uh, I present the app one to you, I want to tell you that um, we, our main goal is to help our customers to become more energy independent. Um, and in the residential space, we have been doing that so far with these products. So we have NV True 12, uh, number one, that's the 12 kilowatt inverter. Uh, we have NV 8K and 10K, that's number two. So these are hybrid inverters. Um, 8K and 10K look identical, that's why there is only one photo for both of them. Um, to save some space on the slide. And uh, yeah, of course, the performance levels uh, um, differ between um, NV True 12 and 8K and 10K. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, True 12 delivers 12 kilowatts of output, um, and 8K and 10K uh, deliver 8 kilowatts and 10 kilowatts uh, respectively. Also, the NV True 12 can do 200 amp pass through which is perfect for whole home backup applications. Number three, you have Guardian Hub, which is the battery uh, monitoring system. So the inverters have their own monitoring system, but um, to monitor each battery separately, to do the firmware updates on the batteries, uh, we offer the Guardian Hub. In the bottom, we have, to this day, the core of our business, the batteries. So um, now we are offering energy storage uh, systems and energy storage, storage solutions, but we started with the batteries and all these inverters and everything else is there so you can harvest the energy from the batteries. So number four, we have EFLEX, that's the 5.4 kilowatt hour battery that I mentioned before. Number five, we have LFP10 Max. Um, this is sort of um, the second iteration of the battery that we started the business with. To this day, our LFP10s are in, uh, used by SEPTA, so Southeastern uh, Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. And yeah, we're, we're very proud of uh, what start we had that, and that those batteries are still there, still, still doing that, uh, their job and uh, keeping the railway system reliable in their own part. We have uh, Evo Max, that will be number six. Uh, arguably, this is the flagship model uh, when it comes to uh, 48 volt residential batteries. It offers 18.5 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, and the difference uh, between EFLEX and Evo Max, um, the main difference that comes to mind in their principle of how they're used, EFLEXs can go outside. Uh, Evo Maxes cannot. Evo Max can be only uh, can be only installed indoors. So since um, eFlexes can go outside, we decided to um, we decided to uh, offer additional um, additional safety for the batteries, additional um, security of the installation, and that's how we um, came up with Durarack. That's number seven. So it's an outdoor enclosure for um, added protection for the EFLEX batteries. Uh, it can hold up to four of these EFLEX batteries. And uh, right next to it, number eight, you see it looks very similar. At least half of it is identical. 
um, that's uh, the flex tower. So it's a dual rack with a tower uh, onto it. Tower is there to uh, provide the additional protection for the inverter that you are using. To this day, these batteries are inverter agnostic. Um, it makes more sense, at least to me, to have um, the inverter and the battery come from the same place. But if you really have preference um, and you really want to use specific inverter, our batteries are still uh, able to work with other inverters. And even in most cases, um, when the communication is available, support the closed loop communication. But again, not to drift away from the main subject too far, I wanna switch back our focus to the innovation which is the Avalon system, rather than existing products um, that have been around for a while now, uh, which are these. Um, so yeah, let's move to the Avalon. This is the Avalon system. And uh, throughout this presentation, it will become apparent uh, how much advantage it has over everything else available at the moment. Of course, it can do a whole home backup. It can do 200 amp pass-through. Uh, it can work with uh, AC coupled solar or DC coupled solar. It is generator compatible. You can install it outdoors. It has integrated rapid shutdown device transmitter. Um, so when you're um, uh, requesting or when you're ordering the inverter, you can request either AP Smart transmitter or Tygo transmitter. And um, uh, yeah, it has wireless monitoring wireless programming. I'm going to show you the videos later how that works. Uh, we offer optional level two EV charger that you see to the left um, of the photo. And the battery bank size can be increased all the way up to 58.8 kilowatt hours. So yeah, the batteries have been around um, for a while now. The inverters have been for a while as well. The smart energy panel is what makes this uh, system so special and what makes it all possible. Not only does all the power management that we'll see in a moment, but it also has built-in load chain. Um, but the way we designed the system and the goal that we had in mind was that we wanted this system to be simpler than everything else available. We wanted this system to be effective and efficient. And also, uh, we have the goal in mind to make it aesthetically more pleasing than everything else uh, that is available on the market. And I think uh, looking at it, we have achieved all three of those goals. And today I'm gonna show you how and uh, what methods and with what tricks and so forth. What was the approach that we had that we um, realized with the Avalon system? So again, just to remind you about the EV charger, it's optional, you can get it, whatever, it's just an EV charger. Inverter, high voltage, a battery, and the smart energy panel, those are the uh, elements that make up for the Avalon system. So when you're purchasing the Avalon system, you purchase these three. Um, of course, there are some adjustability. You can get two different inverter types. You can get uh, different amounts of battery modules, but that will remain the same. You cannot purchase the Avalon without the smart energy panel. You cannot have the Avalon with a different inverter. Avalon is a system. And um, sooner you're gonna think about it as about the system rather than combination of inverter battery and the energy panel. The easier will be to understand the, um, the rest of the content presented in this webinar. So, um, I said that we had uh, goals in mind, and put it simply, those goals come down to easier, quicker, cleaner, and significantly cheaper. Um, please remember this, and we're going to return to it at the end, and it will become very obvious uh, how we did it, and then all these uh, four lines will um, make a lot of sense to you. And also there are a few natural benefits that come uh, with the system. Uh, we have high voltage batteries. Um, so that means the inverter doesn't have to work that hard to bring up the voltage, to scale up the voltage. And also um, you can get away with thinner cables, which is um, added, uh, um, which is added uh, price, uh, cost savings for you. Think about it. If you have a more efficient system, you can get away with less, um, you know, solar panels. If you have higher voltage with a set amount of power, you don't need um, you know, that much current carrying capability, which allows you to save on the cables and so forth. But nonetheless, let's start with the battery. 
So the batteries, just like every other battery that we uh, make and provide to the market, uh, uses uh, lithium ferrophosphate chemistry because it is the safest and also it delivers the um, most amount of cycles without um, the significant decrease in performance. Now, you see that we have multiple battery modules here. We're gonna uh, go a little in more detail what what counts as a module and what it does, but in this case, we have four battery modules and fifth one is the battery management module. Um, you can have up to six of these modules per stack or you can have two stacks uh, working in parallel to deliver 58.8 kilowatt hours of energy capacity um, because each module is 4.9 kilowatt hours of capacity. So you multiply that number by 12, you get 58.8. Each module has its own active heating and passive cooling built into it. So active heating, there's a heater which uses the battery power in extreme conditions. Since this can go outdoors, it has the heater built in. So you can extract the energy from the um, batteries even in um, sub, uh, sub minus 10 degrees Celsius temperatures. And also you can charge the battery sub freezing temperatures. Um, so the heater works when the ba battery has any energy uh, stored in it. So all the way down to low voltage cutout to 0% of state of charge, the heater will be there to uh, warm up the battery so it can uh, operate without interruptions. Passive cooling, that is aluminum heat sink on which um, the uh, cells sit. And that helps with uh, heat distribution and so forth. Each module also has active fire suppression system. In each module, we have um, this, it's like a chemical sprinkler. So, um, nano elements i think they call it it comes out and it spreads it displaces the oxygen it takes the heat to expand and so forth so um we have the safest chemistry we didn't have any accidents uh, before but for additional peace of mind we included the active fire suppression system because um yeah we know how people react to lithium batteries unfortunately there's this um uh, negative narrative that, oh, they're not safe. Well, we're doing our best to convince people that it's safe, but if they need extra peace of mind, here, you have an active suppression uh, system in each module. And also, I mentioned before, these modules are connected in series, so the maximum current that will flow um, either to the battery or from the battery is going to be 50 amps. So, uh, this is how the modular design looks like when you break it down. So the top module is always the battery management module. It contains the BMS battery management system, which is, that's the abbreviation for BMS. Uh, it contains active heating control mechanisms. So uh, the um, device that decides whether or not it's time to turn on or off um, the active heating is there. And also it has built in charge controller to decrease the voltage from whatever it is based on the uh, amount of modules that you use. Um, it brings voltage down to 24 volts and uses the 24 volts to um, provide the power to the uh, battery heaters that we have in place. Uh, and, and this is the lightest module. It only weighs 30.8 pounds. Now, battery modules. Uh, each battery module, as I said before, uh, is 4.9 kilowatt hours. Uh, and each module weighs roughly 90.4 uh, pounds, let's say 90 pounds for simplicity's sake. Um, and each module has the nominal voltage of 48 volts. 48 volts, in this case, for example, we have four um, battery modules. That means that the combined voltage when you connect these battery modules in series would be 192, right? Yes, 192 volts. Um, so yeah. Uh, Previously, the way it was, um, uh, was that you had different batteries and they would connect in parallel and you would get a nominal or a 48 volts or 51.2 volts. Here, everything is connected in series. The only exception is that when you have multiple battery stacks, when you have two stacks, what happens is that those stacks have to be symmetrical in the sense that each stack should have the same amount of battery modules um, and then these two stacks are connected to each other in uh, parallel. So the modules to each other connect in series, um, but the stacks to each other connect to um, 
uh, in connect to in parallel. Um, so yeah, let's look inside what's happening in the inside of the battery management uh, module and also what is happening um, on the battery module side as well. So you have the power button that turn on, turns on the BMS, then the contactors are closed and you have voltage applied on the power cables that are connected to the, um, to the battery. If you turn off the battery, there is no voltage on those terminals, BMS goes off. Uh, again, these are the battery modules themselves as such. Uh, battery cannot be turned off. There's always a contactor that either allows the voltage to be applied to the power cables or doesn't. Um, so there's the power button there. And we also have the breaker. It uh, kills the power to the contactors and the BMS. So only, and um, also it uh, prevents the um, voltage to be applied on the power cable. So once you put this um, breaker in the off position, that's it. You cannot turn on the battery. There is no voltage anywhere. So yeah, this is like extreme turn off for the battery. Now uh, you have battery positive uh, and battery negative. So battery positive would be that this cable right here with two orange um, ends. So this is the only cable that you will see in your package that has two orange ends because that's the cable that connects the battery module to the battery management module. In other cases, since this is in series, you will have uh, cables that have um, orange and black ends. So you, since this is in series, you connect positive to negative. Um, you also see right here, let me zoom in a little bit, just a moment. Um, there's this little small white button right here. Uh, so you don't need any special tools to connect these cables. If you want to remove the cable, you push in that um, small button and you pull the connector and that's it, you have disconnected. If you want to connect it back, you just uh, guide the um, connector in place and push it in and it's going to click and that button will lock the connector in place. Um, same applies to the negative cables and um, also you have these heating um, power lines. Uh, those, those are the ones with blue ends. Those are the ones that carry 24 volts and you see it, uh, they have little wings to them. So if you want to remove this cable, you you grab the wings and uh, rotate uh, counterclockwise and then you pull on it to remove the cable. But you won't, if you want to put it in, you put it on, you push it in, and that wing uh, uh, snaps in place and that's it. The cable is connected. You also see the communication cables here and you see the ground uh, cables as well. Um, also, I don't have the text for it, but the aluminum heat sink that I mentioned, this is the aluminum heat sink. So it looks like uh, looks like a little radiator or whatever, and that allows for passive cooling for the batteries when needed. Um, so yeah, this is what the internals look like. Um, again, if you have more questions about this, you can refer to our manual since um, this webinar is really to show you what it is and to prepare you um, for future installations. So you understand the principle of operation, but in, in no way this is the substitution to the manual or the uh, any supporting documentation that we have in place. And all of that is given on our website, fortresspower.com. So let's move next. Um, what do we have next? Just a second. This is um, the way the battery looks from the top. You see we have a battery negative and battery positive. Uh, maybe the colors are not the best ones that I have chosen, but nonetheless, serves the purpose fine. You can distinguish the two. And we have the ground. So positive and negative, very conventional. That's how the batteries have been forever. Um, but the ground is something new. Previously, we were grounding the case of the battery. Here, we're grounding the actual battery. Um, that is because this is a high voltage system and it has to be grounded and you ground it to the inverter. Um, and you also see the communication cable. So we're gonna get, get into uh, more detail in a moment. Once I introduce the inverter. So the inverter, 
there are two inverters that you can choose. There's a 7.6 kilowatt inverter and there's an 11.4 kilowatt inverter. Depending on your needs, uh, you choose between the two. Each inverter, um, in terms of DC capabilities, is the same. So you can have um, four, not you can have, but you will have four, four and a half kilowatt MPPTs, uh, which means that in total, the um, input to the uh, inverter from the DC coupled solar can be up to uh, 18 kilowatts, or if you really want to be exact, that will be 18.24 kilowatts. Uh, you can have up to three inverters working um, in parallel. Um, and uh, the only thing that I want to add to this line is that uh, you need to have the same inverters. So you can have three 7.6s or three 11.4s, but what you cannot do, you cannot mix the two different types of inverters. You cannot have, let's say, um, I don't know, two 11.4s and one 7.6. That unfortunately is not possible. Um, and yeah, as the naming convention suggests, uh, 7.6 kilowatt inverter, it outputs 7.6 kilowatts, and the 11.4 kilowatt inverter outputs 11.4 kilowatts. Uh, it provides uh, two, uh, two legs, two lines, L1 and L2. Uh, each of them, of course, 120 volts to neutral. And between the two, you would get uh, 240 volts. And as I mentioned before, you have uh, integrated rapid shutdown uh, transmitter, which based on your preference can be either APS or Tygo, whichever you specify on the order. So let's see what it looks like from the within side, so to speak. So you have this waiting for you once you remove the bomb pedal. You see the uh, four MPPTs, those are four pairs right here. So PVX4 that I wrote to show that there are four MPPTs, you have PV1, PV2, PV3, PV4 positives, and then next to it, you have the same, but negatives. So um, yeah, and that's where you connect your DC coupled solar. Uh, then you have the communication board right here in the middle. And um, yeah, let's go to the slide. And you have, the battery positive and negative right here. And you also have uh, two triplets for uh, AC side of the inverter. So you have L1, L2 neutral for load and separate L1, L2 neutral for the grid. So when you're outputting power to the loads, the load ports will be uh, responsible for delivering power. Uh, but if you are importing from the grid, let's say to charge the batteries or you're exporting to the grid because you have net metering or time of use, you'll be using the grid ports. So now we come to the core of this um, system that would be the smart energy panel. I don't know how much you can tell. This system has been released uh, for like what? We did the uh, product review, I think, two months ago. I'm still super excited about it. I really am. Because this is the innovation that the market really needed. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. Before, let me show you what it has, what it does not have. And then let's dive into more detail how this all interconnects to each other. So this is what you get uh, from the inside, uh, and this is what you not get from uh, with your purchase. So grid in 200 m um, breaker, load 200 m breaker, and these breakers for a third hybrid inverter, generator, EV charger, inverter, those you don't get as well. The reason why you don't get that, um, most of the houses will have the grid in breaker 200 amps, um, load breaker. You may have it or you may not, not have it. In most cases, you will have it. Um, again, and we could not know in advance whether or not you would have it. And uh, we made it conventional so you can install the regular inverter, uh, regular breakers, in this case, Eaton, um, and, and go with it. But if you don't need um, these breakers, we didn't feel like charging you for those um, because including these uh, breakers would increase the price and not everyone would need these breakers. Same logic applies to the four breakers right here, PV third hybrid in, uh, inverter, that is either if you have AC coupled solar or if you have three inverters, 
um, you would have this breaker in place. If not, you don't have to. There are knockouts and you would not uh, use the knockout and you would not put the breaker in if you don't have three inverters or you don't have AC coupled solar. Same applies for the generator. I can assure you, most of our customers, especially with tight ones, they don't have a generator and uh, we would not charge them for the breaker that they're not gonna use. EV charger right here. Um, as I said, EV chargers are optional and inverter. So um, this is responsible for up to two um, inverters. Based on what inverter type you have and what is the amount of the inverters that you have, um, the uh, rating of the breaker would change, right? Um, and because of that, we didn't include this um, uh, load breaker as well. Um, but again, here in this case, uh, we are using Eaton BR260 series breaker. And uh, this is standard. Square D, for example, would work as well uh, if you really wanted to do that. But nonetheless, these breakers are not included because of that reason. Everything else right here, for example, you have the grid breakers for the grid, uh, inverter grid breakers for the inverters. They are in place, they are included, um, but they come with a package. They are included, but they're not mounted. You mount it yourself, no special tools needed. Now, um, it has a DIN rail and you clip onto the DIN rail and that's it, you're done. You also see the small switches right here for load shedding. Don't be scared. You don't have to manually go and use those sw the switches to achieve load shedding. These are, so to speak, overrides. If your phone dies and um, I don't know, if you have gloves on your hands and you cannot use the touch screen on the smart energy panel, you can go and use the switches to override um, the low chilling position that you have based on the um, initial configuration on the app. But again, this has wireless monitoring. We'll see it monitors and controls everything. So <clears throat> now the interesting part, wiring everything into the smart energy panel. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start uh, bottom right and I'm gonna go counterclockwise to end in the bottom left. So you have grid cables coming in and the grid goes through the CTs that are built in. Then it goes to the 200 amp breaker, which we have in place. You might not have it in place, depends. Um, but nonetheless, then it goes to this little transfer switch. This is there to serve the purpose of isolating the smart energy panel from the grid altogether. But in this case, let's suppose it's in the on position. Your grid then goes through this transfer switch and goes to the main bus bar of the smart energy panel. This main bus bar combines everything AC, everything. So grid, you see it's entering from here. Um, Let's zoom out. You have grid entering from here. Inverter load is here. Third inverter load uh, would be here or AC coupled would be here. You would have um, generator breaker here if you had the generator and you would have EV charger breaker here if you have the generator. For those who uh, are installing the Avalon for the end users that have um, uh, electric vehicles, this is actually a, a big benefit because that means that you don't have to modify anything about the main electrical panel. You just put in one breaker here, connect your uh, EV charger here, and that's it. Um, so I mentioned the grid. I said the load for uh, up to two inverters, uh, AC coupled or third inverter load here, generator and EV charger. And then these cables are going to the main electrical panel, which is already in place. This means that you don't have to install additional sub panel unless you're in California, but that's a different story because you have to have the sub panel there, but anywhere else, you don't have to install the sub panel. This just jumps in between your meter and your main electrical panel. And that's where all the magic happens. Um, and we're gonna go to the single line diagrams and it's gonna become more apparent there. But for now, let's continue to uh, load shedding right here. You see the load shedding elements, these orange things. So each of these um, blocks are responsible for um, one 
uh, single phase circuit. Um, if you combine two together, that means um, they would be responsible for one split phase circuit. You also see the neutral bar here, right here, the top one, and you also see the ground bar right here. Um, so there's that. And also the inverter load connects right here and you see that it has the space for up to two inverters. So this small bus bar can have, each can have two cables going in. That's your inverter load. And you'll see the breakers for um, the inverter grid. So in our case, uh, on this photo when I was taking it, uh, we had only one 11.4 kilowatt um, inverter connected. So you see the positive right here and negative right here. If we were to connect the second inverter, positive, additional positive here and here, uh, negative here, and for the third inverter. And these are what are going to be included in your package for your grid breakers, inverter grid breakers. So yeah, now let's look at the interconnection of all of these. So you have the inverter load right here. I used uh, this rose purple color. So you have um, inverter load right here and you have grid that is blue uh, on the right side. So you see it right here, load, grid, load, grid. And the arrows. So load comes in, goes in, goes through here and this bus bar is then connected to these cables, right? And these cables are then connected to the um, main breaker, or I'm sorry, the load breaker, which sits on the main bus bar of the smart energy panel. The grid, it connects uh, to the inverter on one side, on the other side, it goes through the breaker and it is connected right here, right before the transfer switch. So now a few words about the load shedding and we can move to the um, single line diagrams to see how it all comes together. So in your regular household, you have main electrical panel somewhere and you have your load somewhere else. And in between you have a switch. In this case, for the load, I use the light bulb. For the switch, I use the regular switch. Um, and yeah, when you, the switch is in the on position, the light bulb is on. When it's in the off position, the light bulb is off. Now, let's throw in uh, the load shedding into this scenario. So right now, you have load shedding element in the on position. So it is allowing uh, the current to pass through and to go to the load. What is not allowing this to happen is the... Uh, uh, light switch, which is in the off position. We put the light switch in the on position, everything is fine. It lights up, everybody's happy, there's light. We had power outage here yesterday. <laughs> so it's always good that when, when, when there's a power outage and you realize that you work for the energy storage company, <laughs> we didn't get the power outage. But nonetheless, um, so Load shedding is on, switch is on, uh, and there is power to the load. Now, let's put the load in the off position and the load shedding also in the off position. We try to turn on the load, nothing happens with the switch because before the switch, there is a load shedding element that is not allowing for current flow. Uh, you put it uh, in the on position and then it lights up, so like so. So the idea here is that if you have load shedding, you can manage the um, manage the power better, right? That's one thing. You can get away with less inverters. That's the second benefit. Um, and also, uh, it has additional uh, additional purpose in our case because of the smart energy panel, and to understand that now we're going to go to the single line diagrams and look at what's going on. So this is how the conventional installation will look like. You have service entrance right here. You have the service entrance to the smart energy panel. It goes through the smart energy panel and then it goes to the main electrical panel. Now, um, I showed you this path before. 
um, this means that there is no direct connection between the service entrance and the main electrical panel. The smart energy panel sits in between. So um, the grid has to pass through the main bus bar, which has everything else connected to it. So to your main electrical panel, it all looks the same. Where the power is coming from, it does not matter. It can be service entrance, it can be inverter, it can be the generator, EV charger, it doesn't matter. The trick here is that once this bus bar is energized, the main electrical panel bus bars are energized, which means that you have power to your loads. Which loads get the, get the power? Um, comes down to what your load chaining uh, is doing what loads you have connected to load shedding and in what position the load shedding elements are on or off um, on the inverter side we see that the dc is combined by the inverter so your dc coupled solar goes to the inverter so does your battery these are both dc sources but the inverter as the output only provides the ac right so it provides the load which goes to here and it provides the grid, which goes right here, correct? So, and the grid is used only in cases when there's a power outage. I'm sorry, grid only is used uh, in cases when you're importing from the grid or exporting to the grid. Load is used when you're trying to power your loads using the, um, using the batteries or the solar. So the idea here is that, um, the load ports are employed when you need to supplement the uh, grid usage or you want, you want to altogether take over uh, the uh, take over the task of powering your loads uh, with the inverter depends on your mode of operation but in any case what's uh, uh, what's very important is that the smart energy panel governs all of this so inverter doesn't act independently based on what is what is entered there no smart energy panel uh, governs the energy distribution and power flow based on what is connected to it and what needs the power and what power is available for example if there's a grid outage of course it will tell the inverter hey don't output anything to the grid no way only provide to the load once it provides to the load ports the inverter provi provides the power to the load ports then uh, automatically provides the um, power to the main bus bar or the smart energy panel, which means that automatically your loads in your main electrical panel get of the um, power. If grid is available, for example, right, and um, everything is fine, and you just want to export whatever you're producing, nothing, no power is applied to the load. Uh, or some power could be applied to the load if you want to supplement some load and the rest to be sent to the um, grid. So in different cases, it's going to work differently. And you're um, you're choosing your mode of operation with the app when you're configuring this. But all of that happens with the smart energy panel. And before you had to have many combiners. If you had the generator, it either would connect to the um, to the um, hybrid inverter. If you had multiple hybrid inverters, you had to have um, uh, some kind of uh, generator combiner box. You had to have the sub panel for the, your um, essential loads or critical loads. You had to have many things. Here, you only need to purchase the Avalon system and few cables and few conduits. That's it. The rest is there. And perhaps the breaker or two. It's fine, but you are not building anything extra. Sub panels, combiner boxes, um, shutdowns, so forth. No, none of that is needed. Everything is here. Everything is in the Avalon system. All you have to do is just to use it. In California, it's different because there you're mandated to have the critical load panel. So the idea remains the same. Uh, it's just instead of the grid going from the meter directly to the smart energy panel what happens is that you will have one breaker in your main service panel and that provides the power to the smart energy panel and then you have the critical load panel uh, connected to the Avalon. okay so i was talking about grid available and grid unavailable uh, conditions so just wanted to give you 
full visual visualization, what I've been talking about for all this time. So let's say grid is available, your batteries are fully charged, mm, no, nothing is needed from the uh, batteries or the DC coupled solar. So you get your power from the service entrance, it goes through the main breaker, then from the transfer switch, then from the main bus bar, and it goes to the main panel. And everything is fine, everyone is happy, there is power. All of a sudden, a grid outage occurred, right? All of a sudden, your transfer switch uh, switched to the off position. So it's not going to allow anything to be outputted uh, or anything, any interconnection between the main bus bar of the smart energy panel and the grid. So that interconnection is not there until the power comes back on and the smart energy panel verifies the grid. Also, you have disabled your grid because maybe the power outage is caused by the fact that someone is performing maintenance on the grid. You don't want to export anything there. It's unsafe. So um, the grid ports are disabled. The only port that is enabled is the load port. So the load port will go through the small bus bar here. It will energize the main bus bar through this breaker. And once this is energized, yes, the current will try to go in uh, all the directions. So it will try to go to the grid, but uh, it's not going to happen because, hey, uh, the transfer switch in the, is in the off position. So you cannot go here. It will uh, try to go to the um, uh, generator or EV charger. Guess what? There are dedicated load shedding for generator and EV chargers. So it cannot flow there as well. And the only path to go is the main panel. It goes to the main panel and it energizes the main panel. And that's it. Uh, in this case, I don't have it uh, visually displayed, but if the EV charger was to be used, let's say you had a very sunny day, you have plenty of power, you want to charge your electric vehicle with the EV production, fine. The load channel will um, allow the current to pass to the EV charger. So it would have two paths to take. One would be to the main panel, the other one would be to the EV charger. So that's the principle. The main electrical panel with its load shedding and with its um, transfer switch and the main bus bar, that governs where the energy goes. And this makes the system super efficient and super effective. And I truly, truly hope that I did my best uh, and you realize exactly what I'm talking about. Um, because yeah, it's crazy. It's it's really good. Um, I'm 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 part for the I'm a I'm a member of the technical committee for this system, and still it's amazing every single time to me. Although I should be used to it by now, <laughs> but nonetheless, we all have our nerdy sides here and there. So let's let's look at time. Okay, so 15 minutes. I had one like real real world example. I don't know whether or not we have time for this. I really want to go through it, so let's assume that we have time for this. Uh, I'm I'm not going to dedicate so much attention to the videos, and I'm going to focus more on this to help you understand the system. So, let's suppose the situation: your customer is an engineer that has two 11.4 kilowatt inverters, and the following loads are connected. Um, um, so you have HVAC, split phase, 15 kilowatts, fridge, split phase, 15 kilowatts, microwave, single phase, one kilowatt, TV, single phase, 0 0.5 kilowatt, garage door opener, opener, single phase, two kilowatts, lights, so forth. I'm not gonna go through the list. And um, at the end, the customer really wants to have HVAC available at all times. The rest is up to you. In the pursuit of the perfect configuration, answer the following questions. So I'm gonna try to answer those questions with you. Again, there are many ways to do it, but some um, some important aspects will remain unchanged. So which of these loads would you consider critical? Well, when I was writing this problem, I had uh, two critical loads in mind, HVAC and fridge, and the garage door open. Those three are extremely critical because um, HVAC was specified by the customer. Fridge, I mean, you don't want your food to rot. Uh, and garage door opener, you don't want to open it by hand, if anything. You still want to use it if you quickly want to go and uh, go to your nearest deli store or whatever. 
So those two I consider to be critical loads, at least to me, those would be the critical loads. Now let's think about how much um, power demand there is. So if all of those were to turn on at the same time, how much power would they demand? So we have 15 kilowatts for the HVAC. Uh, we have uh, two kilowatts for the garage door opener. That's um, seven kilowatts. And we also said that the fridge is one and a half. So 17 plus 8.1.5, that's 18.5 kilowatts. We have two inverters, which are uh, 11.4 each. So we have 22.8 kilowatts uh, of output available and 18.5 um, available for, um, or not really available, dedicated for the critical loads, right? Um, so what is the total kilowatt for the critical loads? Well, we just answered that. Uh, it's 18.5 kilowatts. Is the output from the two 11.4 kilowatt inverters enough to power the critical loads? Sure, because um, 22.8 is more than 18.5. Um, what loads would you connect to load shedding? And the next question, are there enough load shedding elements? Here's when the, where the interesting part comes in. Whatever is considered to be the critical load, first, you need to have enough power to satisfy those critical loads. That has been like that even before uh, the Avalon existed on this planet. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing is that whatever is the critical load to you, that should not go through load shedding. It doesn't go through load shedding because you want it to be available at all times. So why would you need load shedding to either allow the current flow to it or not? So in this case, we have 18 and a half kilowatts of um, uh, critical loads. We have 22.8 kilowatts of uh, inverter output. Let's see how many kilowatts we have left for other things to load shed. So, um, 22.8, 18.5, so that will be 1.5 plus 2.8, 1.5 plus 2.8 is 4.3. So we have 4.3 kilowatts left for everything else. Now we have more than 4.3 kilowatts here. So uh, lights are two kilowatts uh, and the dryer and um, washing machine, they are four kilowatts. Uh, I'm sorry, three, three kilowatts in total. So that's already five kilowatts. We're already over. So what we're going to do, we're going to count how many single phase and how many split phase um, units we need to load shed. So HVAC and fridge and the garage door opener, uh, we exclude that. What we have left is the uh, microwave, TV, um, lights, well, actually, lights are critical too. Lights are for sure critical. So we don't we don't even have that 4.3. So it went down by uh, by uh, two. So we have 2.3 kilowatts left. So we have all these things left, and we have limited amount of power. So we're going to count how many um, low shedding elements we have. We remember we have 12 low shedding elements, each being able to handle only one per phase. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine single phases. And uh, engineering weird engineering thing number one is a split phase. So I have 11 um, low shedding uh, elements uh, available. Or I'm sorry, I'm gonna have um, 11 appliances uh, to load shed, nine of them, um, uh, no, 10 of them being single phase, and the 11th one uh, being um, split phase. So 12 load shedding elements are right enough for me because I'm going to uh, send a weird engineering thing number one through the split phase. That's for one. And the rest of it will be single phases. So are there enough load shedding elements? Yes. If yes, how many load shedding elements have you used? All 12. If the customer didn't have the request about the HVAC availability, would you connect it to the load shedding? The answer here is no. The answer here is no, because you have split phase 15 kilowatts, right? You have split phase 15 kilowatts, which means you have 240 volts and 15 kilowatts. The load shedding can only handle 50 amps. 
15 kilowatts is over that. So that's why you the answer to uh, question G would be no, because it exceeds the amp rating for the load shedding elements, which is 50 amps. And would you rather be here or split HR? I'm gonna leave it to you um, to look up split HR. Uh, hint, hint, I'd rather be there <laughs> or be uh, conducting the webinar from there. So now let's look at the videos and how you configure everything to um, your liking and uh, how to have appropriately configured system altogether. So once you create your account, your email, phone number, address, everything else, you are going to enter the address um, and precisely select your location on the map if needed. Um, then it's gonna go through, uh, go with you through a checklist, the app will. So it's gonna ask you, is there sufficient ventilation space? Check that nothing is left there. Interconnections, um, no uh, conductors are showing anywhere, so forth. So it's, uh, it helps you to double check yourself because you've been working um, hard for multiple hours. You may be tired, hungry, might be thirsty. So yeah, it helps you to double check yourself before commissioning the system. Again, um, that is useful, but you can skip some of this. Uh, or right here, it says uh, skip this, and you're going to skip this altogether if you if you're feeling uh, confident. I personally would not skip it. I like to double check my work, but nonetheless, it's up to you. And then if you select no. For example, if you're installing in California and it asks you, have you moved the CTs from the uh, smart energy panel to the um, uh, to the, the grid entrance? Well, if you haven't and you don't know why you have to do that, you're going to tap no and it's going to show you the graphic. It's going to explain that if it's left in here, it will only see the consumption for the critical lows. It will not see the entire consumption, so please move the CTs. So, so forth. So there are small instructions uh, here and there as well to make it easier for you to install it. So when, once you uh, complete this questionnaire, or perhaps skip it, um, which I don't recommend doing, then you have the instructions where to connect the commissioning uh, uh, or the communication cables. It's going to show you instructions like this. Just this is just an example. Uh, and then you are going to grab your phone and you're looking for the Avalon system to connect to it through Bluetooth so that then you can connect the Avalon system to your home Wi-Fi. So your neighbor's um, earbuds or mouse is not gonna show up here, only Fortress devices will. So it's looking for the Bluetooth device, it's looking, 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 found it, very good. You select this device. Once you select this device, uh, you decide what kind of internet communication you're going to have. Hired wire ethernet, very straightforward cable going into the smart energy panel providing internet. Use my device as a hotspot. Again, you turn on the hotspot on your device and that's it. And scan for Wi-Fi networks. I reckon this is going to be the most common solution. Scan for Wi-Fi networks. It's going to scan the networks. You're going to select your home Wi-Fi and you're good to go. Then you are to configure the equipment. You start with the inverter. So the inverter in this case used was 11.4 uh, kilowatt inverter. So you select the inverter and you tap begin setup. Once you tap begin setup, what happens is that it's gonna ask you um, to confirm utility AC settings. Now, what is this? It's asking you about the grid regulation. So default would be United States and its territories excluding not including, but excluding California, Puerto Rico. So if you're not in either of these two places, you're going to select default. Next, um, California for, or, and Hawaii. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I skipped the Hawaii. California, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii. So you have um, California, Rule 21, Hawaii, Rule 14, Puerto Rico, I think they use IEEE, Luma, something. I don't remember exactly. But if it so happens that you're installing this somewhere else, you can select other grid regulations too by tapping other. The previous time when I was conducting the webinar, it was when it very unexpected. I said, oh, well, if you're installing this in Australia, you can tap other. 
and then I was like, but probably you're not going to install it in Australia and uh, we don't have Australia grid regulations there. And then I started laughing. You will see why. Because I'm sorry. So when you tap other, what happens is that the Australia is the first one to come up right here. Just a moment. <laughs> right here. Australia, Australia, two different regulations. <laughs> so yes, you can install this system in Australia if, if so needed. But nonetheless, most of the US, you're gonna select default and go with it. If it's California, Hawaii, or Puerto Rico, there are other selections that are you know, easy to find. Now let's go to the next. Uh, and here you select your mode of operation. Save solar for my house. That is something that has been known forever, like self-consumption. Sell power to the grid. That can be your net metering, time of use, none, doesn't matter. If uh, if you're trying to sell power to the grid, you select that. Keep a lot of backup power. Very straightforward, backup mount. Live off-grid. You're telling the uh, Avalon system that you're living off-grid and there will not be grid available and it should not look for it or show you warnings that, oh, there is no grid because there shouldn't be any grid, you're off-grid. So, once you uh, tap on any of these, it's going to show you this small uh, diagram showing how the power flow is going to work, you know, roughly what the distribution is going to be. And also it allows you to select whether or not you want to let your battery to be charged from the grid. If you want to, most of the time I suggest that you find that desire in yourself and put that check mark there. Um, but if you don't want to by some reason, that's also fine. Um, and once you make that selection in the top right here, you see Save Solar for My House, you need to put a check mark there as well, and only then you confirm your selection. Otherwise, like here, you check mark both of these and then go to next. Uh, yeah, this video is too long for some reason. Next, you start with the uh, Smart Energy Panel. You need to configure the smart energy panel. And you before you tap begin setup, you see that everything right here is grayed out. That is because nothing has been configured on this side at all. So connections, solar generator, EV charger by solar here is meant AC coupled solar is not configured. Load circuits, i.e. Uh, load shedding is not configured either. So you tap begin setup. Let's tap it once and for all right here. You tap begin setup and you start with the solar AC, AC coupled solar. You see that there are two dedicated load, load shedding ports uh, uh, or load shedding elements, load shedding blocks dedicated to this because your solar AC is 240 volt split phase AC. Uh, yeah. So, Two of them dedicated to solar AC. If you have uh, AC coupled solar, you select solar AC. If you don't have AC coupled solar, but you do have additional inverter, you select additional inverter. If nothing is connected there. You're not using the breaker and so forth. You select disable and continue uh, with configuration. So in our case, of course, we're going to select disable and move to the next. So next one being the generator just a moment right here generate so you saw what changed first you saw the generator like so and there is no check mark right here i have connected the generator to the smart energy panel this is not check mark telling it that no you don't have connected the generator but if you actually do have it connected you see there there are two low chaining ports right here and again one very important thing to note since we're here. Um, the generator, as we saw, it connects to the smart energy panel. In terms of the output of the generator, um, it does not have to be matching the inverter's output because the generator directly uh, delivers the power to the main electrical bus bar on the smart energy panel. So it directly sends the power there. It doesn't, I'm sorry, let me pause this. It does not have to go through the. Um, it does not have to go through the um, inverter. 
So, for example, you have, um, I don't know, 11 kilowatt inverter, but only 7.6 kilowatt um, inverter. That's fine. You can use all of that 11 kilowatts. Most likely it's going to be either 10 or 12, but nonetheless, let's say you have 10, right? Your inverter is 7.6 kilowatts. Your generator is 10 kilowatts. You can use all 10 kilowatts. The only limitation is that to charge the batteries, you cannot exceed 7.6 kilowatts. But to deliver to the uh, smart energy panel, you can deliver up to 10. But remember, I said that the load shedding um, blocks or elements are rated for up to 50 amps. 50 amps with 240 volts, that translates to 12 kilowatts, which means that generator that is connected here should not exceed 12 kilowatts. That's the rule for now. We're working on, I personally have the initiative of uh, a small uh, rework of the rule and there is some flexibility there. But for now, that is the thing to keep in mind. 12 kilowatt generator is the biggest that you're gonna to connect to the Avalon system for now. Um, so generator, I mentioned that already. I explained my reasoning behind the limitations and now the generator. Once you check mark that you have a generator, this is what appears in the bottom. So uh, you tell it when to turn on and when to turn off the generator. The smart energy panel has the dry contact for the generator auto start, which means that it is not going to provide any voltage, but it will open and close the relay. And most of the generators are dry contact anyway. So it's going to open and close the relay to turn it on and off the generator, right? Um, and it is in the smart energy panel. It is not uh, in the inverter. Again, generator in this case has nothing to do with the um, nothing to do with the inverter. Generator with the Avalon system directly talks to the smart energy panel, right? So there's that. Then you select the mode of operation. You can select how much power you're willing to dedicate to batteries uh, out of uh, from the the output of the generator. Right here, in this case, we uh, select the three kilowatts and then test generator. You tap it and it tests the auto starter whether or not everything is connected properly and it turns on the generator. Um, so, but if you don't have the generator, we didn't have the generator while shooting this video. We uncheck mark that and. Uh, you know, proceed with the rest of the procedure of configuration. So then EV charger. EV charger is the one that is the most similar to the rest of the load shedding circuits. So I'm going to spend some little more time on the EV chargers and less on the load shedding elements perhaps. We'll see. So EV charger, disable circuit. We don't have this uh, check mark. Disable circuit means that if you don't have electric vehicle and you don't have the charger for it, you select, um, you don't select anything. I'm sorry, you select disable circuit. If you have the EV, char uh, EV charger, then you enable this uh, circuit without check marking the disable circuit. You have settings on backup off grid, settings on grid power. So when the grid is available and when the grid is unavailable, Right here, the first default select selection is disconnect the circuit while off grid. So if the grid is not available, this circuit is not available. The next option is, um, again, I said about the disable circuit. Once you tap disable circuit, all of this menu disappears because the smart energy panel understands that you don't have the EV charge. But let's continue for now. Um, why is it giving me such a hard time? Okay, right here. So then you select um, what happens to the circuit in off grid. First default is disconnect the circuit while off grid. You can have it in auto. Auto is that uh, the smart energy panel will decide by itself do I have enough power to send to the EV charger or no? Um, if you put it on auto, you select the battery percentages. Now, um, so it during which um during uh, or through what battery range can they use the power to char uh, to send it to the ev charger um and you have also the last one in this mode of operation selection 
the last one being right here. Keep the circuit. Um, sorry, let me pause. Keep the circuit connected while off grid. So even if the power is out, it's always available, always connected. Now, now you notice the dark background. You notice that we're in settings on backup off grid power. Then, once you have configured this, you tap Save Settings right here in the bottom. You tap Save Settings and you move to Settings on Grid Power. Once you go to Settings on Grid Power, you have very similar, if not the same, uh, amount of adjustability. You have Disconnect the Circuit, you have Auto, and you have Enable the Circuit. You have Battery Percentage Adjustment and so forth. So again, this all happens through the dedicated spot for the EV. And uh, once you have configured this, then it's time to go to the actual load shedding. So load shedding appliance name here is entered manually rather than previously, for example, for EV charger, it was preset for you that it's EV charger because it's dedicated to the EV charger. Here, circuit name can be anything. TV, my favorite TV. My least favorite TV, doesn't matter. You can enter the text. Um, then rated amps was the rating for the circuit that you're connecting to this um, um, to this load shedding. For, I'm, I'm saying circuit because sometimes you have appliances, right? Sometimes you have circuits. For, for example, kitchen lights in my house, they are separate circuits. And if I would be low chatting, I would not be low chatting each light. I would be low chatting the entire circuit. But I don't see myself low chatting kitchen lights. <laughs> but nonetheless, just for the sake of uh, the example. Um, so rated amps, you, you enter here. Appliance name, you enter here. You also select whether you want two phase or it should. We're going to change some wording here and there. So uh, instead of two phase, it's going to say split phase. But um, right here, you select whether or not the circuit that you're connecting is uh, single phase, like here. It's on check mark. It assumes it's single phase. And you see how only one load chaining element is highlighted. But later, if you check mark two, two of them are highlighted. It shows you which ones you're going to use. And remember, as I said, you combine the load shedding uh, elements, two of them together, you can have split phase circuit connected to it. Um, and the rest of it really is the same as for the EV charger. You have off-grid or when the grid is unavailable, it doesn't necessarily mean off-grid. And to this, my previous comment also applies. We're gonna change uh, wording uh, here and there. And you have, you have on-grid, you have disconnect, auto and enable, and you have battery percentages here right here like so so once you configure all of this then you have the summary right here appliance circuit you see the greens right here they are connected they are available since we don't have ac coupled solar we didn't have the generator at the time of uh, recording this video and we didn't have the ev charger connected to it those are in red meaning that we did not configure or we configured this to be disabled so hence the red we configured the, these based on our preferences hence the green um so once you have this summary then you have the next summary of the entire procedure so you selected the utility ac settings as default we're in pennsylvania so default applies to us save solar for my house so consumption i mean we're in the lab what else we're going to use it for uh, <coughs> and connections zero out of three that refers to the ac coupled solar ev charger um and the generator appliance circuits one and five tv and microwave we could come up with more uh, creative names for these but nonetheless uh, serves the purpose well and then at the end when we're trying to confirm the setup all of a sudden it, it asks this uh, question send the equipment registration now this will only work if you're connected to internet which in case we were connected to internet we were connected to the lab wi-fi I strongly urge everyone to say yes, because that means that it will submit the warranty form by itself and it will send the registration by itself, which means that there are two apps. One is for end users only, one is for the installers. The installer app, they see all of the sites that they have commissioned. The end users see only their own home. 
uh, if you say yes here, it will send the registration and it will be um, available on your monitoring and the end user's monitoring and the warranty will be submitted. If you say no, it's not going to send the registration, but you will have to manually uh, fill out the warranty form. And also you would have to assist the, the end user with creating the online monitoring, um, not the account, but with the account having the access to the uh, Avalon system that you commissioned. So yes is the recommended choice here. And uh, turns out I'm all the way through my presentation, unbelievable, over an hour. It was well worth it. I hope you agree, agree with me. And yeah, as you see, I gave you one more reason to secure your energy with us. Thank you, Fortress Power. And I do thank you for your attention and your time, which is extremely valuable, both of them. Um, and now I'm ready for your questions. Let's start with the ones, if there are any that have, have entered so far. Questions. There are no questions. Either I did a marvelous job or I scared everyone away, confused everyone, and no one is going to ask a question. At least if you're not writing the question, please provide the feedback. Are you confused so much so that you don't have any questions? Or it was so clear that you don't have any questions left? Maybe something in the middle. No, nothing. Right now, the questions bar on my screen looks like passive cooling. I want it to look like active heating. I will give you one minute to enter and submit a question or some kind of feedback. Otherwise, I'm not gonna waste anybody's time and we can go about our business and you will know that Fortress Power has this awesome thing uh, to offer to you, which is called Avalon System and Geo did the, an amazing job presenting it to you highlighting its importance and how good it is at accomplishing the task of making the installation cheaper because you don't have to invest into breaker boxes, generator combiners, breakers, uh, have cables, spend like three days commissioning one system and so forth. No, you just get the cables, Avalon system, electrical panel is already there. Maybe you need to add one or two breakers here and there and commission the system. Uh, Okay, good review of the system. Low chatting options are important. Uh, options for a residential or commercial site. For sure, Mark, we agree with you, uh, definitely. The only thing about the commercial, um, I know that there is no question about that one, but still. Um, this system is for only 240 uh, volts. So 208, 480, that will not be available. Commercial accounts, but split phase system, yes, for sure. But um, three phase, no. Um, so I see the question. I missed most of the presentation, but could you explain if your batteries are high voltage or 48 volts? Mm. Well, uh, you missed not only the presentation or most of the presentation, but a lot of fun too. <laughs> At least that's what I want to believe in. But nonetheless, to um, answer your question, um, our battery modules are 48 volts, but the modules are uh, connected to each other in series. Let me show you since you missed it. Well, let me go back for a moment and show you what I mean by that. Um, now. Right here, this is what I was looking for. So this is what it looks like. So you have your battery management module sitting on, on, on top of everything else. And the bottom one's everything, but the top module is the um, battery module. Each of them 4.9 kilowatt hours, each of them 48 volts, more of them you have, higher your voltages, more efficient in terms of current flow your system becomes. Um, uh, 
again, one more uh, question. 240 volts AC covers a lot of small commercial systems in my area, Washington. Yes, for sure, definitely does. Um, that, that, that has been my experience as well. Um, when I say my experience, um, I was working for applications engineering department before I became the uh, sales engineer. And um, yeah, I was talking to a lot of people and I have some idea about uh, what's going on all across the country. So yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yay, hey. LP chemistry? Yes, definitely LFP chemistry. All the batteries that we offer to the market are based on LFP chemistry, just like the ones that we were offering for residential before, or now with the Avalon commercial batteries, doesn't matter. When for, when you see Fortress Power batteries, you know that they are LFP chemistry. UL9548 listed? Yes, absolutely. But we have UL9548 listing even available on our website, if I'm not mistaken. That was played, uploaded a few days ago. Uh, if not, contact the sales department. They will send you the document that has the manual and the UL9548 uh, listing there as well. Hmm. Any other questions? Okay. My home has a 13.4 kilowatt solar system and manual transfer switch for all load circuits. Okay. I could use battery backup and all of my portable generators as my distribution can go down to a serving state. Yes. You could do that for sure. Um, uh, seems like we don't have many more questions left. So I think uh, we have spent a considerable amount of time together. I hope that I, I achieved my goal of showing why this system is so special, so unique, so important and so effective. And so desirable, by the way, uh, a lot of people show their interest into it, um, which makes me glad. Um, but nonetheless, for today, I, I'm going to call it a stop. And uh, yeah, if you have any further questions, you can go to our website, fortressfire.com, or you can contact our uh, sales department. A gentleman here is writing, thanks of Tando. My pleasure. Thank you very much for not misspelling my name. <laughs> that rarely happens. My big compliments to you. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, secure your uh, energy with Fortress Power. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day and the weekend as well.